Hello everyone and welcome to Wizzo Talk. Why Wizzo Talk? Because I want to know, don't you? Hear Wizzo Talk, play it like you said, uncut and unedited. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the hot topics yet to come. Like to be a guest on the show? Hit me up in the comments. Have a hot topic you like to hear discussed? Also, hit me up in the comments. And always remember that it's free to like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate your support. We're going to meet our guest, which is almost really no guest because he didn't been on kind of regular. And then we're going to get on right off into some random thoughts. What we got? Much bliss, more life. Seven points of bliss, aka pomegranate samurai. And uh, if you guys ever want to check me out, uh, my podcast is Cosmic Currency Seven 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 on Spotify. I don't know if Wizzo told y'all, but he's also on Spotify as well. I don't know if he's mentioned that to you all before. Um, so check him out on there as well. And uh, man, you know, just come find me, man. You can Google After Real Truth. Find me, man. We can talk about whatever. Just hit me up, man. We can chat it up. Already, that's what's up. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting to mention that I'm on Spotify too. But uh, and just to mention before we get off into our topics, I'm just gonna say, uh, you know, my man uh, Josh has been a uh, guest on the podcast several times, and I just happened to be listening to him on his podcast, and he gave me a shout out. Oh so man, I just want to tell you, man, I appreciate that. Man, you know, I you got even have to, to do that. It's yeah. gotta be. It's love, though, man. Because yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. a lot of information. You have a lot of really good yeah. guests that come through right. and share a lot of good wisdom. And I feel right. like, man, you know, people need that right. Right. more than ever. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate you doing that. So thanks for your support. So what I have in my bag of tricks over here, I have three topics that I want to touch on for tonight. Uh, you have anything that you like two that you might want to come off the top of your head just to say? I mean, I got some random stuff. About, I got. You got some yeah. random stuff. Okay. So. Mine that I want to talk about is the three topics I want to talk about is called uh, parents are the biggest liars when it comes to the kids. Mm. Parents start lying to the kids before the kids ever even should think of whatever. Parents are the biggest liars. And then I want to come back and I want to just touch on one that I call guns down, hands up. Guns down, hands up. And then my last one I want to talk about is you brought to my attention when I talked to you about it how white people originated from the black man. Right. So those are the three things that I got. So just to start it off with, I want to talk about the uh, parents are the biggest liars. And you also know where I'm going with this because we briefly discussed it in a roundabout way, so to speak. Now, as parents, we always tell our kids, don't lie to us, don't lie to me. If you lie to me, it's going to be worse. If you do this, don't lie. Don't Whatever you do, don't lie. True. And we start lying to them right off the rip. And so you might say, well, how is that? Well, I'm glad y'all asked that. Let me explain. Christmas. <laughs> Easter. Father's Day. Valentine's Day, the Tooth Fairy, the list goes on and on. It does. Those are the lies that we start telling to our kids right off the reel. So what make us so special to where, oh, a lie is a lie, am I right? A lie sure is a lie. Is. So what make it where we can start lying to them right off the reel and ask them to trust us, and then here we are telling them to lie soon as they born, soon as they lose that first tooth, soon as Christmas come around. What's up with that? I think a lot of it stems from protection and uh, another percent of it stems from wanting your child to have a, health, a healthy, joyful childhood filled with uh, mysticism and magic. Mm. But in okay. the same way, we don't really teach our children um, the facts. And, and the whole thing about reality is way crazier than any of the stories that we can tell our children mm -hmm. about any tooth fairy or anything. Like a lot of these holidays are representation of other deities. And um, just a lot of things we do is about idol worship, but people don't realize. And I think the number one dangerous thing about them not realizing that is the fact that these things that we're giving our children 
we're not even familiar with what they're really about. A lot of these things are handed down as traditions. Mm -hmm. So you gotta think about it, man. Like um, if the people in the beginning didn't even know, they just thought it was some what they was told, and they just keep handing it down, and automatically it just becomes a cycle. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like nobody does the deep research to understand like why are we celebrating or why are we teaching our kids these things? Mm -hmm. Like for instance, like. When I was young, my I, I got I used to get in trouble because I never wanted to say the Pledge of Allegiance, and then like my, I would always get in trouble with my mom, and like it'd be weird because now as a grown man, I would never force my children to say that kind of stuff because it's like, what are you really pledging your allegiance to? That's a good point. Good point. So, in the end, we're still lying. To yeah, them. we are. I and mean, and it don't make any the, sense, right? And we it's been handed down and passed down from generation to generation, and. And it keeps going on, but at what point do we stop and go and start telling the truth? At the point and stop we, lying to our kids. I think that would have to be at the point where we want to really go through um, a page of self-discovery. You know what I mean? Like uh, we just hand down empty things and this think they're worth everything. Like even now, Christmas doesn't have the same vibe it had when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's different. Back then, you could feel at least some type of love in the air. People were happier. Now, yeah. it's like people robbing each other in the store, beating people up yeah. For, yeah. for items. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when I was showing you, people were like, it would be a lot of people in the store, but people would genuinely help each other. Right. Still. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so uh, like, the lies really, is, it, it gets to the point where it's like we really have to see who we are and what we're celebrating mm -hmm. and what is our culture. Right. Because that whole lion is become his own culture in itself, though. Because my mom told me Santa was real, too, though. And I seen her yeah. put some presents underneath the tree. And I was like, what? Right. And there was so many kids like, Santa ain't real. You're yeah. just a kid. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you believe anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's just something. And, and at one point, I don't remember uh, at what point it was, but uh, I eventually had told my kids that, you know, there's no Santa. There's no tooth fairy. There's no any of that stuff like that. You know, and they, they wasn't, you know, they were probably middle school. They probably already knew at that time, mm -hmm. but it just hit me one time that, you know, I need to quit lying to them. I mean, how can we tell them to be truthful to us when we're going to continue to lie to them? And we tell them there's no such thing as a small lie, a little lie. It's still it's still the same. Right. You know, so. It's very, I mean, it's so deep because it's like, what are we really feeding these children? No. You know what I'm saying? By lying to them. The number one thing we have to wonder is what are they truly gaining from it? Because right. right. at the end of the day, when they found out it ain't real, depending on how locked in they are, they're going to be hurt more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly. kids that shattered when they found out Santa Claus not real. Yeah. I was happy because I'm like, man, ain't no motherfucking fat white dude breaking into your crib stealing the cookies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that was weird to me, dog. Like, where did this custom come from? <laughs> <laughs> My man sliding out chimneys, just sound like a burglar. If somebody yeah. did this in the hood, bro, they yeah. break it in your crib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And you know, and just I mean, it just I don't know if we'll ever stop, but it's just something that I just kinda want to bring to the forefront. And I mean we I think we should. We should tell our kids the truth. If we want them to be truthful with us, we should be truthful with them. Right. Because they can always look back and say, Mama, you know when you told me or daddy when you told me Santa Claus and the two fairy and the money was up under there? Mm -hmm. I mean, it may, if we end it, if we, it's just kind of like when you don't, if you don't ever introduce uh, that infant to sugar or the sweetness, then they don't know what it tastes like. Exactly. I was just having that conversation with somebody else. That's right. weird you said that. Yeah. Because then at that point, even if you just gave them regular fruit, it would be so sweet to them. Right, right. They wouldn't know that wasn't the sweetest shit on earth. No. So if we don't never introduce them to those false... Um, That's so good that you yeah. put it like that, though. Yeah. Because if you think about those lies, it's the same thing like we feed our children, like we feed the lies. It's like, damn, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. <laughs> you know, so I just wanted to chop it up on that for a minute. I mean, you know, maybe some people out there... And, and, and you guys out there and everyone, ladies and guys, I don't want to just make, say you guys, but, you know, everyone out there, if you have any feedback, hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think about it. You know, because parents, to me, are the biggest liars when it comes down to telling our kids. We start lying to them before they ever even learn to talk, walk, or, or anything. We're lying to them right off the rip. And I think once, before me and you discussed, uh, I think all those holidays involves spending money. 
Mm. You know, you're going to spin, they you're are. going to spin. And it's so weird because you know. even with that, like people people don't realize wedding rings, like right, diamond rings and stuff like that, those things weren't given out back in the day. Like these type of things are relatively new. Right. Well, I'm talking about like within the last 80 years kind of new. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because back in the day, people didn't give each other wedding rings. When they was together, they was together. That's almost just like going to the courtroom or something like that to get married. What are you really doing? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the courtroom has nothing to do with that. Right. So there's a lot of things that were that we were lied to about that we keep on sliding on down. And we we still don't realize we were lied to about. Right. Yeah. And that ring doesn't really, um, what I'm looking for here, um, um, I mean, I know it has some value like that, but that ring, I lost my thought that I had it like that. It really don't know. mean anything. Not I really. mean, they try to say the ring represents forever, but to who? Yeah. To somebody who honors it. Yeah. Who? And if you yeah. have to use a ring to honor your forever with the person that you so-called love, yeah. then that ring, it shouldn't mean anything. Right. right. Okay, I got you. So we're going to move on to one of our next topics. So everyone out there that's listening, parents. Are the biggest liars. We lie to our kids right off the rip, and we expect them to be truthful with us when they go to the school. If they done this and they done that or they done done something wrong, we telling them don't lie to me, don't lie to me. And the whole time we lie to them. Just lying, nah. straight face lying too. Straight face lying. Now, before I go on to the next topic, it's time for a commercial break. Everyone out there, this is Paul Wizzo. Thank you for watching. And always remember that it's always free to like, share, and subscribe. That's kind of my little commercial right there. Oh, like I, that. That. I throw that in there. I like throw that. that in there. So my next one I want to just talk about, I'll call it hands down, I'm sorry, guns down, hands up. And you might say, well, what do you mean by that? I was going to ask you how would you interpret that. Right. And I'm talking about these youngsters nowadays. Mm -hmm. They so quick to pull a gun out. But what did old boy tell old pops tell Craig on Friday? Ooh, yeah. Put that gun down, son. This is all we need and live. Fight and live. But some of them are so scared to get an ass whooping, they won't put the gun down and put their hands up. I'm going to tell you, my brother, it was years ago, shit, it was probably somewhere in the 80s, knocked this one white dude clean the hell out. Because the white dude come up to him and said something. Knocked him out. White dude kind of got on up. We was out somewhere in the backwoods, somewhere at a, at a party. He was drinking and all that shit. Knocked him out. White dude got up. He said, God damn, you hit pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> he said, let me buy you a drink. But we was at a free venue type deal. And then I'm going to make my point. And so then I watched my brother have several fights. And I never enter, you know, jumped in because it was one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. You know, they fought. He fought. That's honor, though. And it was Liam. I have a cousin of mine. He is in his mid-50s. That motherfucker then had more fights than Floyd Mayweather. He might not have won them all, but he even had them. He didn't went knuckle to knuckle, dude. That's to your dude. warrior, though. Yeah, you know. But nowadays, they won't put the gun down and put their hands up. So I just want to talk about that for a minute, you know. And and where I'm going with that also is maybe it's so many different organizations around here. You know, there's the Masonic, there's the NAACP, there's the Alpha, the Mega. There's a, there's, a, there's a ton of organizations. So I'm just kind of wondering, could some of these organizations come together, and mentor? some of these kids and let them know, hey, there ain't no guns in prison. You're going to have to put your hands up, you know, and fight about it. So I just want to chop it up about that for a minute. You know, guns down, hands up, and see what you think about that. I mean, I think that's a beautiful concept because when you said it, like, my interpretation was put the guns down. When you said hands up, I didn't even think about fighting. Yeah. I thought about people giving each other a hug. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But the whole thing, when it comes to uh, putting the guns down and, and actually learning how to fight, it takes a certain level of skill to know how to fight. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by other people's power, especially when they know they're weak. Mm -hmm. Usually it is the weaker of the bunch that pulls the gun out first. Right. But we live in a society as to where guns are like idols now yeah. you know what i mean i had like a, it was a, it was a few years ago and i remember this because it was just so absurd when i heard it it was a lady on facebook that said she called her son masturbating mm -hmm. but not to a female magazine he was masturbating to a gun magazine what the hell and i was thinking to myself like how did he even do that you know what i mean what the heck? And, and that just shows you the mind state of the youth 
Yeah. And um, it's really crazy. Like uh, somebody had, on Facebook had posted a video of a girl uh, masturbating with a with a gun. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Using it as like a sex toy. Right. So my thing is like, why did or who did I to make us idolize these guns and, and these weapons so much so mm -hmm. as to where our youngsters are just in love with it? But then we have to look at culture, the pop culture. It's not our culture. It's not anybody's specific culture. It's just a culture of a. Uh, time like a right. generation right. so scar like these young kids out of last scarface uh terminator mm -hmm. uh shit with guns you know right. what i'm saying right and, and when you mention that right there i'm gonna tell you one thing that i think is is the video games oh arcade games call of duty call of duty i went to a gun show with my grandson and i think he was probably about six or seven at that time he popped all that's a blah 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 pop. he knew all of those guns I didn't know. And we, I think we spoke on this in a earlier podcast too we about parenting. Did. Yeah. And about uh, them having uh, accountability for right. their children or whatnot. Yes, yeah, that's right. We did. We did. We and sure it's did. very interesting because it's like, bro, these video games literally teach these kids not only what the guns are, right. they teach them how to mod it. They teach them how to lock and load it. They teach them how right. to shoot it. Yeah. So that by the, at the end of the day, with so much repetition, these kids are pretty much professional killers. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when I was coming up a little bit, you know, I always wanted to go over there. I wanted to be a shotgun. Mm -hmm. I wanted a shotgun, you know, pump action. Now, that's old. That's kind of like a pager. For some of you out there to know what a pager is or eight track tape. Yeah. That's what a shotgun is. Yeah, semi-automatic shotgun. Yeah. Because now, now they're going in there. If they have a choice to buy a shotgun or AK-47, they're going to buy the AK because they see it on the games and they see the action and the violence that it can do. But then you have, and I have another you know, I have so many topics that I want to discuss. You can't get them all in, but I have one talking about mass shootings. But since we kind of talking about, Ooh, you know, guns down hands up, right there, yeah, buddy. yeah, it's just that you know the the the. To, I want to try to stay with this for a minute. To how do we reach these young kids? And I say kids, but they're teenagers, 17, 18, 19 years old, yeah. or whatever. Even some younger than that. Some little kid just shot, uh, discharged a gun on back of the school bus. I forgot what right. how did, the real question but, is how they even get in the guns. Exactly. That's the first question you gotta ask. Right. And then to answer your question as to how to solve this problem, I man, we really need to make sure we're more mindful of the weapons that are in our community. Um, we can't be scared of these children. Right. You know, I had a lady ask me about uh, once before when I was staying in Chicago. She's like, "How did you just walk through those gang members?" Like, she's like, "You just walk through the middle of them like it's nothing." And I told her, I was like. These little kids, yeah, like you see them as like muggers and and well, what did Hillary Clinton call our black youth? Super predators. Yeah, yeah. I see them as babies, bro. Even and like when I was like twenty, I'm like these little these little ass babies out here. Yeah, like you you scared to walk through them? They really want you to walk through them because yeah. they really need some guidance. That's really what they be out there looking for. But people are too scared to give it to them mm -hmm. because you have to be tough. You can't baby these kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what they've been doing. Like they've really been babying these children and these children grow up looking for leaders but they can't find them right. because people are just too scared to approach them. Right. So you need to get these guns and make sure you understand where they are and then you need to take all these kids and put them in like karate class or something. Yeah. Like I feel like before a child, like you know how like school has, uh, what is that called? Gym. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, I forgot what the other name for it was but they, like they have gym, it's mandatory. They really should take gym away and give them some type of martial arts class. Because even in that, everybody would be ready to just scrap. Like, fuck yeah. it. We all know the same shit. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good point. The, the, the thing that uh, some of the kids are, are I think at, uh, I forgot the age shit. But I think at 18, you can buy a long gun. Yeah. So they're buying those. Especially here. Yeah, yeah, here in Texas. Yeah, you those long guns, they're buying those long guns. So he's not going in there buying it. So he don't need his parents' consent or anything like that. Like, I don't think you, they need an idea. I mean, I, not an idea. I don't think they need, like, no type of consent to buy a shotgun. Right. No, you don't. But but my thing is, I was going to say on that, if you're going to buy that long gun, before you bring it up into my damn house, you need some permission from me. Yeah, of course. Know? And so it's like where these... You know, if the kid has a room and he's staying with me, well, you and my motherfucker now. <laughs> yeah, I already know what you was about to say because it's like a black dad. You like, oh, it's just a black parent in general. Like, bro, the only scenario I've ever seen <laughs> where kids do that is literally Caucasian people, bro. Yeah, yeah. She's like, Jimmy, how did you get this gun in here? Bitch, this is my <laughs> personal space. 
Shit. Like, what? Shit. <laughs> Candy ball the dough. Because it's all like a pot of neck balls up in this motherfucker. But, you know, and, and that's the thing. So, I mean, you know, if the kid don't like you doing a, a, a so to speak, a strip search on his room, then he need to go and move his ass out. Right. I so mean, you should know everything that's in your as a kid's parent, room. As a parent, Bro, you got free range. And as a child, yeah. if you don't realize that your room is going to get raided when you ain't there, yeah. or even when you are there, right. at, at random moments, you ain't exactly. doing it. You ain't parenting right. Right. Because yeah. at any time, my mama coming to flip the toy box over, look underneath the mattress. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? She like, all right. Yeah, exactly. And I was young. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she look for anything I ain't supposed to have. I could, I could have something from the kitchen. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It ain't even just got to be a gun or drugs. Yeah. It's it's just having that type of parentness to where you're aware that your child is a child and yeah. children are going to do shit. Exactly. And for those of you who may be just joining in, what we're talking about, we're talking about guns down and hands up. You know, uh, squaring off. Uh, when, you know, a friend of mine was locked up and he said, he say, catch that square. You know, so that means let's let's go ahead. Yeah, run and fade. A, a, a lot of kids, uh, young men and kids at this day and time, are scared to get their butt whooped yeah. because every it's gonna be all over social media. <laughs> but guess what? You I gonna live. Right. Yeah. You're not going to jail. But yeah, you gotta think about like so, to them, and and it's really bad. But in their generation, embarrassment is worse than worse. death. Like they yeah. don't wanna get beat up, and they're like, "Damn, you can't fight." Some people can, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean? And they, when you're and when you're around real honorable men, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Even when they're young boys and they're real honorable, two mm -hmm. people who don't like each other, two dudes, they can fight and then yeah. become friends after that. And friends afterwards. And, and, and shake on it and go right along. But I think that generation is gone. It's gone. It's, it's, it's not coming back. But I would really like to see, uh, I think when I was in school, I was probably in like the seventh grade. And they had a bunch of ex-cons and stuff like that came and talked to us and stuff like that. It didn't help. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I mean, you know, I've never been in any trouble like that. Some of them yeah, goes astray like that, too, you know. Yeah. You know, but, you know, but uh, it just I'm just trying to think of something. And if any of you out there have an idea, hit me up in the comments. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I'll work on it and try to do what I can. But even if you're not in Central Texas, just kind of let me know some ideas or whatever your thoughts are. Or how can we get these kids to put the guns down and put their hands up if they got to take care of set or something? You know, so many shootings, so many drive by. So. How, like, how are the guns even e so easily accessible? That's not like, yeah. like the real thing that I feel like, especially here in Texas, they, they should be doing is any for anybody who wants to get a gun, for anybody who wants to get a leadership position in any kind of job, I don't give a fuck if it's just a supervisor, they should be out here giving fucking mental tests, bro. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? And not right. no IQ tests. I'm talking about to see where you are mentally right. as a person. Right. Yeah. And and I agree with that on some point, but the thing that I, that, and I don't want to talk on it too, too much because I have another podcast session coming up talking about mass shooting, but the thing that I really hate about it that gets me is they want to say that this person is mentally ill. In some cases, he may be, but this is my thing. This motherfucker then just plotted and planned yeah. the whole. So is he really mentally thing. ill? So how is he mentally ill now? You didn't just plot it that. Now I don't know nothing a whole lot about the mental thing. I hadn't done the research on it yet. That's why I haven't done that podcast yet. No, I and I probably have someone on. But my thing is, you didn't just plot it and plan the whole freaking thing. Mm. You didn't left notes. You didn't play stuff on social media. You didn't did this. You didn't make the last call. You didn't wrote out your will. You didn't done everything. Sound like you sane to me? But that's just me. I don't. That's that's above my head a little bit. So I'm just talking in the box, outside the box, or in between the box. I, don't know. I feel you now. Wait. But you know that topic right there, everyone was guns down and hands up. How do we get the kids? How can we reach them? You know, and it really is. You know, I've done a lot of volunteer work, you know, mm -hmm. in the community for years years and years and work with youth kids and stuff like that and coach kids in football that wasn't even mine, you know, for 16, 17 years. And there's a lot of other parents out there doing it. And some of those kids are have been to jail and whatever and stuff like that. But as far as I know, none of them have went with a weapon charge or mm -hmm. killed anybody, shot anybody, because that was a little while ago. But now... The, the the internet and the video games wasn't advanced 
as they are now. True. When you're seeing this video game on Call of Duty, Tour of Duty, or whatever it is, I don't know, uh, when he's shooting this kid, this other guy with this AK and his head explode, you know. So, anyway, guys, uh, I was just talking about what I was talking about. We covered two things. Parents are the biggest liars when it comes to telling your kids that they, we lie to them before they ever even start walk, talk, chew bubble gum, not before they piss and shit. But we started lying to them right off the rip. Also talked about guns down, hands up. That was a good point where you thought I was going to go with talk about giving them a hug. But they ain't going to do that because they subscribe thing and this thing right here, they can't do that. That's why I feel like martial arts would be a really good entryway for that because it teaches them honor. Even in the laws, you still learn. Right. And the martial arts would be good. The only thing I would say on that was is some of the parents wouldn't pay for that. So when you said yeah, having that's what I'm school, saying. And free, that, like, yeah. instead of having PE, yeah. have martial arts training or whatever. But then you have the other parents say, "Oh, you teach my kid how to this? Well, no, we're teaching their ass some discipline also. Yeah, right. You know? That's the basis of it is yeah. the uh, discipline and knowledge of self and the body, your right. body. Right. So, and uh, so we talked on that. Uh, I, before I get to my last one, which you know all more about that, so I'm going to probably just mute my <laughs> mic because you, you sent me some shit about when I asked you know, where did white people come from? You told me they came from the originated from the black man. Now that, so y'all don't go nowhere because before we get to that, so I was at work one day and these other guys was up there and we was talking about podcasting and stuff like that. Right. And I don't, this is where they heard it. And I don't see what you think. Then they told me that Michelle Obama mm, was Michael. Is Michael. Mm. You heard that. Oh, did I tell you I, that? I heard it for years, years ago. I, and they said that they couldn't find an authentic picture of her. And they so they said that Barack Obama, Barack, Barack Obama right. really married a man. A man. Yeah, they've been saying he. So I don't know. So you tell me about it because I hadn't really I think heard Gene that. Rivers. Back in the day, Gene Rivers, while Obama was actually in the White House, she said that Obama was gay. And then she came up dead. Oh, damn. Yeah. Right after she said that? Yep. So. Not that long after she said it, she came up dead, man. So you probably think that maybe it was a fan or no, you ain't no telling? I think that Barack Obama, it could possibly be gay. And I'm going to tell you why. If you pay attention to the presidents, right, they usually take care of their people. Whoever gets in there take care of people. Like, you know what I'm saying? We have a lot of white presidents. A lot, right. of, white, a while, a lot of white presidents have taken care of white people. It is no... Like, uh, no mystery behind it. Everybody knows that, right? But a Barack Obama, you would think since he looked like us, he would take care of us. But who did he really take care of during his time mm -hmm. in the White House? It was a lot of homosexual agendas that was pushed through him. Mm -hmm. Gay marriages, all that kind of shit. But people don't pay attention to it. And during the time of his presidency, a lot more of our youth got killed by police officers. You didn't hear him talk about any of that shit, not once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have checked in that because I, I can't recall on, on any of that. Uh, now, I know on one thing, though, I know in the, another guy, a co-worker of mine at work told me this also, that Mitch McConnell said he wasn't going to let anything that Obama put up there pass. Mm -hmm. And we all know that only the president can only do so much by executive True. order. So if it goes to the House, it's got to go to the Senate. Senate don't prove that shit is dead. Right. But I think at that time, the Republican controlled the Senate. So I'm not saying that that's why he didn't get anything passed. But you said something that you heard about him being but gay. This, but this, as yeah, but to some it, other guys. it ain't even just that. See, the, it's not the thing that makes it powerful when it comes to a leader, and especially somebody that was idolized, such as Obama. Because we, like, a lot of our people really looked up to Obama, and he's like, he's one of us. We're finally in there, mm -hmm. not knowing that Obama was like the second one of us that have been in the White House. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The first is John Hanson. He's actually on the back of the two dollar bill. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Just because some things aren't written in history, a lot of people won't know it. You know what I'm saying? That's why you have to go and do your research. Yeah, yeah. But Obama really was doing a lot of stuff for the homosexual agenda. And it is not about what got passed. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that he had that type of influence. So you could say Obama was really like the first star. You know what I'm saying? That's right. how popular he was. Like Donald Trump, like he never had no type of job working in the government. But he was a celebrity. Obama was like our first celebrity president that we didn't even know no fuck about. Like, didn't nobody know about Obama? 
was coming out of Chicago until he started that yes you yes you can yes you can shit right. and then he won for presidency and yeah. everybody loved the dude. Yeah. I think Oprah uh, said something about him first or asked him to run or something. See I, what I'm saying? I think so, but I didn't know anything. But I don't really keep up with a lot of politics. I don't know anything about anyway, that. So I don't. Know but it's crazy that. though. But it would make a lot of sense because Oprah from Chicago yeah. and Obama was from Chicago, yeah. but he wasn't from Chicago. So he, to so it's it's safe to say that it is some speculation about. I can Michelle completely believe being that. Michael. Because, so, and this is going to go into the, the next jump. I mean, I'm not going to put it there, but it's kind of it's kind of got something to do with that too, though. So, j people assume just because two people have children that they had to have made them in the normal way. Right. You can take skin cells and turn them into sperm cells. Yeah. And you can take skin cells and turn them into eggs, like what a woman has, and make children. Mm -hmm. So, it's mm -hmm. a possible there could be two dudes that had a baby. They just grew, they got grown somewhere. Right. Or had got put inside of another woman as a surrogate. So the pictures that you see, if you see any young pictures of Michelle, it's really not her as a little girl. I mean, it could be, but how do you know she not know her hermaphrodite? That's true, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, people automatically go straight to a dude. <laughs> yeah. But she can have both. You know what I'm saying? Like, they there's a lot it. of stuff happening on the planet that's been happening people forgetting about because it's not mainstream. Right. If it's not mainstream, we forget. So right now, the only thing people are thinking about is fucking dudes that want to be women or women that want to be dudes. And I'm thinking, right. like, it's whole other parts of humans out here. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So <laughs> I guess those guys had a good point because I had never heard that. So oh, I've heard it. I was like, so you already knew where I was going with yeah. when I said. So, all righty, well, we're going to leave that alone that uh, Obama was gay, so to speak, they say. Word on the they street. They said his gay lover had came out and everything, didn't he? I think oh, I've I just heard that. somebody say that like his, they was at some type of uh, conference or something like that, and Obama was talking. I, he, they said it was recently. They said the dude came out and like oh, at the what? middle of the conference, just started screaming and talking about it. Damn, I hear that. I, I, mean, I, it's, it's I mean, I mean, I heard it from know. a person. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying people could look it up and find it. So we'll find it and see. Okay, before we get on to uh, my, my last topic, and I know you probably have some stuff that you want to cover anyway. So some of our viewers out there right now, and they probably wondering. About the feathers, oh yeah, you know, man. And, uh, it, it, it's called the the, the chief. Uh, 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 yeah, this is a war bonnet, man. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I couldn't but get the chiefs usually wear head pieces like this, though. Okay. So you know what I mean? And like not guess on. Well, I, I, I personally I like rocking it because uh, it's a part of my culture, and a lot of people don't realize that the people in this land that are labeled black people are actually the indigenous people of set land. You know what I'm saying? And we go way back to uh, what they think the Mayan temples were built by uh, Hispanics when they really were not. It was built by our ancestors as well. Uh, even to the older temples is older than that because the Olmecs had built those Mayan pyramids that they think were the Mayans when really the Olmec pyramids. And then you go to the Grand Canyon and those are some of the oldest pyramids on the planet. Mm. And our people were here building it. And we like, man, you know what I'm saying? And we really got taken out of the picture when we were labeled as black because we were moving into these things called the projects and if you uh do any i don't know if you know about the projects just very little bit only because know. it's like high-rise buildings yeah. and it'd be like maybe like 20 or 30 floors just yeah. stacked and people yeah. just living in close quarters and i mean it was very violent there but if you do your research on the projects those projects were actually made for native american people which were all the so-called black people mm. So a lot of our stuff was taken from us and there were people put in our place so that the enemy could keep our land. You know what I'm saying? Right. So on my dad's side, I'm a Choctaw. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then on my mom's side, I'm a Skokie Creek. Okay. So you know what I'm saying? I'm just repping the feathers. I'm just, I just got to get back into the culture, bro, because it's like a lot of stuff was taken from us. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the people that's there now that call themselves Indians actually are... Um, Alaskan natives. So if you actually Google American English, American Indians and Alaskan natives, you will see they actually look the same because they are. You know what I'm saying? Those people took our place and they actually have Native American schools here in America to train people to be Native Americans. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So that goes back to an old saying where it was like, that's a $5 Indian. What that meant was you could literally spend $5 back in the day to get the paperwork to say that you were an Indian. So if you actually go look at the, um, tribal leader for the Choctaw is actually a Caucasian man, mm. which don't make any sense at all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that also leads into the fact that black people were the first people and everybody else came from us. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> don't, 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 don't get them all that right now because you got to let me ask the question no, before I got you, you give bro. all that away now. Y'all stay tuned for that. Don't, don't give them that yet. 
But yeah, I, that, so anyway, so everybody, I hope he kind of explained to you, you know, why he wearing it and what he have and he represented. And just before I get on to that, uh, my last question here is, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, what's that, uh, DeSantis, Ron DeSantis, I think it's in Florida, or something that's talking about uh, history and not want history taught, not mm-hmm. this and that. And then you hear about people saying they want real history taught. Oh, real history like Christopher Columbus or something. Uh, all the stuff that we've been lied to <laughs> yeah. since I was a kid and I'm in my mid-50s. But yet when you come up to tell them the stuff that you're talking about right now. People, they fight it. They fight. They don't, they don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. They want the real history. They want the lie because, I mean, when I come up, I was watching The Long Ranger. Well, here's this white man. Right, what they teach you, right. And that's what they told us. They made him the hero. And guess what? Found that later on, it was was Baz Reeves, I believe, was I Crazy. Think the, you know the real Long Ranger. Crazy. You know, I found that out. So everything that was taught to us then was a lie, and that's what they want us to keep. They want to keep teaching us the yeah. lie. They don't want us to know the true history. But then you have to also think about it in a, in the way that. Um, it's really to them it's not a lie to them that's how they want to betray it because when you put things in pop culture yet again it becomes reality or fact mm-hmm. so back when i was a shorty you know what i'm saying i know they had when you was a shorty too was cowboys and indians right right you know what i'm saying everybody wanted yeah. to be a cowboy a cowboy was cool with a cool leather got the guns yeah what the indian have born and arrow hatchet <laughs> but then as you become yeah. more aware as an adult and you start to realize History is never written about the people who've lived successfully in peace and who have been one with the planet. You know what I mean? History has always been about the murderers, the killers, the people who could take over civilization and the people that can, you know what I'm saying, rewrite everything. And that's always the dominators. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when you get wise and you start to understand like, damn, these people was making guns, but the Indians had guns too though. Yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying, the white man didn't even make the guns. They got it from the Chinese people. Cause that's where the gunpowder came from. Cause they have fireworks. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like yeah. everything started coming together. You're like, damn. So really, the Indians was on some higher shit. Cause they was really killing mm-hmm. these cowboys, and they had fucking bows and arrows yeah. and hatches. Like yeah. they was, they didn't even need all that. Yeah. And then sometimes they had a better game plan yeah. than, than the cowboys. And you started to realize that hey, the cowboys gave me the good guys. They moved in on the fucking Indians land and was killing them. Yeah, yeah. Taking it. Right. Taking it. Yeah. And so we look at it to this day, and it's like, man, we we as so-called black people are lost because we don't know who we are. Yeah. And I feel like once we start to understand that we do not deserve reparations, but instead we deserve our land back, yeah. that's all we need. We yeah. need our land, and you get the fuck off our shit. Sounds like pretty well said to me. So put a pin in that. It's time for a commercial break. Hello, everyone. It's Paul Wizzo. I'm going to thank you for watching. Always remember, it is free to like share and subscribe talking with my man josh going off into my to my last uh topic and then after that i don't know what josh may have but it, my man josh has been a regular on my show because i mean he has so much knowledge and so much research and, and can remember a lot of that shit and i can't remember none of that stuff and he sent me and text me and stuff and I'll be looking at it and my mouth be open and I'll be like wow man you know it's, it's crazy it's just some crazy stuff out there you know the internet is does have some good out there and it does have a lot of bad but I was talking to you um, I forgot what I really originated my question I was going to have a I was going to do a show a video and I asked you something about white people. Yeah, you asked me where they but came from. I asked you, you where like, they, you asked my opinion of where they came from. Yeah, your opinion of where they came from. And then, boy, 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 shit, he hit me with a whole book and a half. I say, good Lord, I read it too, every damn word of it. I say, you know what? I'm not going to make no short. <laughs> I'm going to go on and just <laughs> get you on the show and let you tell the people out there that's watching and... I can just want to say it like this. A lot of white people about to be mad. Yeah. They're not about going to believe what you're about to tell them. It's hard for them to digest but, it, man. Yeah. But I asked Josh the question. I said, Josh, where did white people originate from? And Josh, in short, I'm going to say, and then I'm going to let you go ahead and say it. You said, from the black man, so to speak. So 
I'm gonna back away from my mic and I'm gonna let you go and tell them because I can't remember all that that you told them and I'm gonna let you let them know where did the white people really originated from. Well, the, uh, the caucus race, because white in law, by which they go by, actually means to be um, sovereign to the land or to be a moor. And black means to be bleached or pale because black actually origin originated from the word blake, which means to be pale or bleached. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when we look at the caucus people, we really have to understand that everything that is comes from us. You know what I mean? And when I say us, I mean us melanated beings. Like um, even when you look at different civilizations, they're always melanated counterparts. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think it's India. Their darker counterparts are called the Untouchables, mm -hmm. and they're like they're slaves to the lighter people. You know what I mean? Like they treat them bad. And why are they called the Untouchables? It really like as a child when I heard that, and I seen how badly you were treated, I really thought like these people are gods, because gods are untouchable. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even think bad about it. I was like, you know what I'm saying? And even when you look at our people here. Um, in the Americas and how we're downed, right? We're really praised. You know what I mean? And you really have to just look at it in the terms of the reason why we're being slaughtered is because in the caucus uh, mentality, they believe that killing something is eternalizing and that's how they worship things because they worship death. You know what I mean? Right. But they, you wouldn't think that. Because it's like, even when you look at like how they portray church and stuff like that, you have to wear a cross and the cross represents death. But why wouldn't you wear a symbol of eternal life? Because if your savior died for you, your savior entered eternal life for you so that you can come through, you know what I'm saying? And go to heaven. So it's like people just look at things real backwards. So these people come from us and the science will prove it because uh, you could take a Caucasian woman and she will not give birth to a black baby like that like a dark dark black baby like she give she can give birth to a light skin you know right, what I'm saying right. but even that person is gonna look a little bit different as suppose if it was a white man that got a black woman pregnant you know what I'm saying and there's even been stories as to where two regular old dark skinned people have had albinoid babies and stuff like that void of all pigment so when you start to look at that and you start to look at the science that they cannot produce the same thing that our women can produce, you start to see that the true origin of all is the woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because if it can't no other race reproduce in other colors, then where did they come from? You know what I mean? And over time, people don't also realize that we are also like plants. You know what I mean? Like, uh, what is it called? Uh, not calling, but like a select selective genetics or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like if you want a person to get lighter and lighter and lighter, right? Which they say the big head of scientist Yakub did because they made fun of him because he was so black and his head was so big, which is really not that far fetched. You know what I'm saying? That he made a race of people to want to destroy, which is understandable because they're young. They're young species, so they do what young species do, like little right. kids. You know what I'm saying? They break some shit and be like, ah. But they said this big head scientist Yakub took people that were melanated and kept mating them over time and over time and over time and what ended up happening was whenever he got a genetic mutation as to where the skin was pale you know what i mean he took the darker babies and he killed those babies and he kept the lighter babies and let those babies mate so they kept getting lighter same thing we do with fruits and things of that nature right, you know what i'm saying like right. bananas don't look the same carrots don't it's all through selective mutation mm -hmm. and then that's what the their skin tone is you know what i'm saying so science has showed like um they end up getting trapped in the Caucasus Mountains. And then the Caucasus Mountains is where it was cold and stuff like that. That's where it existed through the Ice Age. And they got even more pale and their hair got even more straighter and they evolved to look a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got the different type of cavemen, though. You know what I'm saying? When you look at that type of science back then, a lot of people don't believe in evolution. But you can't think about evolution in terms of how men try to explain it. You have to look at evolution in the way that the uh, Bible and other books explain it, you know what I mean, which is through like a genetic modification and things of that nature. Even in the Bible, it spoke of uh, cloning when they talked about Adam and Eve. They had to take out Eve's, I mean, Adam's rib and make a whole nother person. So you're really saying you took genetic material and made another person out of it. What is that other than cloning? You feel me? So when you, you have to look at these type of things and you have to understand that even in our Bibles and even in our Qurans, there are things being spoke of that we haven't started to comprehend in modern day science that they were doing back then because everything was created by something. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, man, these people were created, then they were modified throughout time as far as 
nature because everything evolves. You know what I'm saying? Whether you want to believe it or not, if you don't believe in the theory of evolution, I can understand that. Right. But there is a way that we could have been genetically modified and then over time we still could have evolved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like people don't see these things and put them together. Like it has to be one or another. And that's not how it has to go. Like even as a child, I remember my mom had told me that people is a sin. And the saying goes, um, church and science can't go together. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. But why? Right. That makes no sense because there's an absurd amount of science in the Bible. Right. And in all these other holy books, it's just that we can't comprehend it. Right. So these white people were literally created like how we created bananas. You know what I'm saying? Bananas used to be small and packed full of seeds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And over time, we kept choosing which ones didn't have the seeds in it. And we would plant those seeds and we would get those. So it's like over time, we mutated these things. Yeah. They were genetic, they're like genetic modified fruits. Except they're the youngest species on the planet. You know what I mean? And we had treat them, we treated them so bad when they were younger, right? And then, and a lot of the texts, they tell you like, uh, the first to be last or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why these people now have domination over everybody because it was a karmatic debt that we had to pay back to the cosmos or what they call God. Yeah. It's deep, bro. Because think about this, bro. How, how else would we have been the top people on the planet, right? right. And now, where are we? Yeah, shit on the bottom. Because the American so-called black or the American indigenous American people that are called black people, right? We literally push the foundation for a lot of things across the planet when it comes to culture mm -hmm. in general. We make a lot of things popular. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we don't look at our power like that. But to have power of influence like that over the planet, it really means that you have to be somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're going to get an equal level of hate. Mm -hmm. Because when people see your greatness, they're going to have to hate on you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, when you, I, and I never thought about it till you, when you said that about cloning. You know how you know God took you know yeah. it was written or said that He took the you know the rib from Eve and and that's cloning. But yet nowadays they're frowned upon. They don't want any of that going on. But that's what happened. Yeah, and it's today. going. It's been going on. Like so, they've been cloning humans since before they told y'all they was cloning sheep. Then you think they're gonna be like, oh man, we cloned some humans? Hell no, nah, people be freaking the fuck out, man. Nah, they they told y'all they cloned these damn sheep. When I was a shorty, I seen that shit, and I already knew they was cloning people. Yeah, that's just like when we just had the podcast about the uh, UFO. Right. They denied it, denied it forever, and now they bring it on up. And that's another thing I just want to just touch on. If any of you out there that's watching or listening, go back and look at some of our other videos, some of the other ones. If you have any uh, topics? Uh, uh, any questions about it, hit us on up and let us know. We'll come back and uh, kind of clarify it and bring it back up. I'm sure it's going to be a, probably quite a few questions coming up about, yeah. you know, the white people, you know, being originated and all from the black man. But when you look it up, and I'm sure you sent me stuff about this, even about the big head scientists, that the information is out there. Yeah, you just have to. They just mutations, man. That's all. That's all it is, man. And then uh, when I was when I was also like watching stuff on History Channel and stuff like that. A lot of the, back in the day, a lot of scientists were like, "We don't know what happened to the Neanderthal." You know what I'm saying? Like, I think the Neanderthal was like one of the dumbest cavemen, but they still were smart on a certain level. But they were like cock strong and they had like thick bones and they liked the cold. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what the fuck? Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost a, and then now when you do your research on Neanderthal, they said they'll show you that the largest concentration of Neanderthal DNA, you know where it is? What? In Europe. In Europe. That in little Europe. island compared yeah. to everything else. Damn. And when you mention Europe, uh, uh, ah, dog, I had it right there. Because uh, I know when something was talking about, you know, I, I saw this one lady and she said that's where the white people come from, was Europe. I think it was Europe. What in Europe or something? Yeah, they came from the Caucasus Mountains. From the Caucasus Mountains. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But because this and this is the thing that people just don't get, and when they learn it, people are so against it. But it's facts. When you go to Europe, when you go to Rome, you look at these older pictures of the people that were there first. They were all melanated people. They were Moors. You know what I mean? Think about this. Where are they getting alligators and crocodiles from? Because they damn sure don't have that in Europe. 
<laughs> they were bringing that shit from Africa, man. You know what I'm saying? The Moors yeah. built castles. They were known as Moors, and they were also known as Master Masons. That's why. Right. They were building these castles and doing all this shit. So at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? They were the ones bringing this shit over, making these moats and all this shit. They, they civilized these people. If you go over there or you just do a little bit of research, which people don't like to do, but you, you do yeah, your research. I do a little bit of research, yeah. You will find out that pictures of Jesus, right, are black. Mm -hmm. Pictures of uh, the Madonna, which is his mother, mother uh, the Virgin Mary, black. So all the great warriors, black. The knights. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they only show you a few white motherfuckers, but really they admire the ebony people, and that's what they call them. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in all their artwork, you'll see and they holding people got the the little sun beaming around their heads and stuff like that. So it's like, man, our people are held to the highest regards in other places right. because people know history. Right. It's us when they take it out of history books. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's the same thing I was saying like about medical school. You're only gonna learn from the people that's funding that shit, what they want you to learn. Exactly. And who's funding the, the books, right. you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, yeah. And, and that's part of that history that they don't want us to know. Yeah, you know, it's deep, bro, because yeah. it's kind of like, what, yeah. when, nowadays you gotta look at what you're learning as, what am I not learning? Yeah. That's how you gotta yeah. look at your education. Yeah. Like, okay, I see what you're telling me, but what aren't you telling me? That's exactly. more important. Oh, they're definitely not gonna tell you anything. That's the same thing with the parents and the kids. The parents laugh so much, the kids need to be thinking, well, what aren't you telling me? Yeah, yeah. They're definitely gonna keep something back from you. Don't want you to know, especially don't want us to know. It's kind of almost like when they didn't want us to read. <laughs> yeah. You know. And, and, well, and why not, though? Yeah, you know. It, it's kind of it, like when they were burning women at the stake for being witches. Yeah. And, the, and to the, the meaning of the word witch means to be a wise woman. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. They knew wisdom. Like our grandparents, like nowadays they'd be like, oh man, your head hurt. Man, take a towel and all. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, your grandparents were like, oh, your head hurt, baby? Oh, well, did you have a bowel movement? Then first they go to that. Because they know that if your bowels aren't moving, your toxins are high in your body. Right. So that could cause it. Yeah. Oh, they're like, did you drink water? Like, damn. Yeah, yeah. The doctor don't even be like, man, you looking dehydrated. Yeah. They automatically give you some shit. Oh, yeah, that's automatic. And we covered that also on one of the podcasts, too. They and, always want to yeah. prescribe you something. That's and it's just weird got. because it's kind of yeah. like, man, when did we lose the ways of our elders yeah. to know how to heal ourselves and our young ones? We Now we just go straight to our enemies to give us the bullshit. Man. I'll tell you, all right, you guys, this is just something we can just kind of go on and on and on. But I'm just going to do just a slight recap. Then I'll come back over to you to, uh, with some closing, whatever you kind of like to go on, and then we're going to shut this thing on down. All right. And uh, uh, so we kind of talked about, uh, you know, parents being the biggest liars. How parents lie to the kids just right off the bat so before the kids even know anything. Parents, you lie to them. Why? So hopefully somebody out there give me some feedback on that. Will it ever stop? I don't know. And then, you know, my wonder, you know, the guns down, hands up. You know, fight that out. You know, tell that kid to put that gun down and fight. And and like the old boy said on Friday, and live. Yeah. Not go to jail. We already, I mean, the cops is already, in, in, and the white people, you know, the, the, the bad cops or whatever, so to speak, is already looking for ways to lock your ass up. And any little thing, and the judge going to throw you in the jail because half them judges crooked as fuck too. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion, you know. They ready to lock your ass up and keep you in there working, you know. And then we talked about, which I didn't know nothing about, Obama being gay. You know, married to Mike or Michael or something instead of Michelle. Sheesh. That was news to me. I ain't know nothing about that. And then, you know, the originator of where white people kind of originate from come from us as the black person and mutated and so forth and so on. And a lot of the stuff that he's telling you right now, he sent me. So you can you can research that. That's you know, why you got like even when you think about the words, bro, they be like, oh, that's human and that's mankind. Yeah. Yeah. People don't think about that. Mankind. Yeah. yeah. Human. Human means to have color. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Woo, well, we can keep on going, but I know people have a short tennis span. That's why uh, YouTube Shorts is doing so well because people don't want to listen to the whole thing. Yeah, it's a new so YouTube TikTok I just break much. it down a little bit and get some shorts and catch your sense, but still hope you come back and watch the full video at some point in time. And just put it in your car. You get tired of listening to music, push play. It'll be up on Spotify. 
you know, it'll be on new YouTube and you listen to it, check it on out. Yeah. But I only like to keep these things going for an hour. We've been going about 55 minutes. So I'm going to let you go on and say whatever you're going to go on and say. And we're going to bring it over here. I'm going to run my short commercial and we're going to bounce. Well, I just want to say, man, that we need to really make sure that we're out here and we're uh, studying, not only for ourselves, but for our children, so that we don't want to hand them down um, unnecessary baggage in terms of empty culture. You know what I mean? Like, we really need to stop lying to them, like yeah. Wizzo was saying, and we really need to give them things of substance that they, therefore, can take on to their children, and so on and so forth. And the only way we're really going to do that is for us to take our heads out of the books that our enemies are writing mm -hmm. and start getting really back into doing our own deep research and listening to our elders. Everything they say may sound a little weird, but you have to understand the world has changed significantly. Um, it can change within five years, let alone 50 to 60, so... We really need to get back into studying and listening to our elders and really find out who we are and uh, who we're meant to be. Man. Right. Exactly. Well put. And uh, before I go ahead and say my last closing, uh, let everybody know again how they can follow you, where they can find you. Uh, Make sure you tell them about the clothing line. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I got uh, my clothing brand. You can check that out. It's After Real Truth, all one word. And uh, if you just want to find me, man, it's everything I'm on social media is pretty much After Real Truth. Uh, my podcast is Cosmic Currency 777. Um, and just, man, like, uh, feel free to stop by and just chat it up, man. I, yeah. My YouTube is After Real Truth. Y'all can leave me comments or whatever. Message me. I'm all down to talk to whoever. Right. Good, good, good. Y'all check him on out out there. And just one thing kind of I like to kind of say is I always used to tell my kids that I like to uh, break the chain, so mm. to speak. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, things that, you know, has been taught to them in the past, whatever, I want to break that and not carry that on. And hopefully they'll go ahead and do it differently for their kids, you know, and their kids and stuff like that. And I just give just one brief example. Well, I'm talking about break chains, you know, white, uh, black people can't swim. You right. Know? So I want to make sure that my kids know how to swim. And they do, both of them. Now, my daughter does better underwater than she do on top, but she can swim. My son, youngest son, he damn near swim like a fish. I love Me, I kind of, I, I can do a little bit, but I, I, I can't do that too much. Now, I ain't going to go too far with my feet on the bottom. You know, but that's what I mean by breaking that chain and then getting them to do more research. You know, back in the day, we couldn't read. You had to sit at the back of the bus. Now, kids still go to the back of the bus. You, now that you can read, you don't want to read. And you have so much research there right now for you. It's the age of information. Yes, to do it. I know when, when I was uh, when you had saw my Masonic symbol, you were saying, "Oh, you know, I'm gonna get some knowledge, some information here, and stuff like that." But the thing about it is, I didn't research any of that. Mm -hmm. I was just introduced to it. I got up into it. I did a little research, and but I didn't dig deep into it. And now that I'm doing my podcast, whenever I get ready to talk about something, I dig into a little research, but I don't really dig deep. And then the, the catcher is, Google don't know it all. They don't. Because when I interview my dad, he tell you about some stuff that Google can't tell you. Chat GPT can't Google tell you. Google only knows what they're going to put into it. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, who programs the programs right. the programs? And, we're not, and, and you best believe that probably some of that's getting put in there is not being put in there exactly. by no black man or person of color. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I'm saying. Like, Wikipedia ain't all facts. Right. But anyway, guys, that was just, we were just coming at you with some of my random shit, random thoughts, random topics, and just wanted to kind of touch base with you on. So, hopefully. You know, you guys give us some feedback. Hit us up in the comments. Let me know what you might think, or uh, what you don't like, what you do like. You know, we'll reply to it all. Josh, you get on there and give you some feedback. Well, the comments is free to the public. Yep. Anyway, without further ado, this is Paul Wizzo. Holla at your boy. <laughs>